Today's video is all about neuroplasticity and trauma. Now your life story gets written into your nervous system, especially in the times where they're most difficult or when your stress arousal is the highest. Your brain and nervous system aren't passive receivers of information. They're actively shaping themselves through what they learn from your environment, your experiences, and also your relationships. A single nerve that we call a neuron will maintain a chemical trace of what it experiences or what it's dealt with. And each one has approximately 5,000 spines on its tail. And it connects with other neurons via these spines so that you could think of each neuron as being in a web of connections. And this is what gives it feedback. Now, depending on what it is that you experience, some connections will get inhibited where they won't connect as much and some connections will get excited so they will form more connections from what you experience. This web and the way it communicates is your unique neuromatrix or what we could think of as like your fingerprint. And depending on your history, it conducts how you respond to future stresses. So we can see this picture here, which shows various parts of the brain, like the frontal lobe here. We've also got the amygdala further down or how you respond to stresses. And the insular cortex is important too for how you process sensations. And the way that these neurons have formed connections will determine how you respond. For example, for people with anxiety, alarms may go off in the amygdala when they experience certain sensations because they interpret that as a threat. But for other people, this may not be the case. So your neuromatrix is unique to you. Although there can be alternative ways to responding to a situation, certain defensive strategies that are imprinted into the survival brain, low down in the brain, as well as the nervous system, which travels through the body. In previous times of chronic and traumatic stress, mean that these connections can become hypersensitized. And this means in the future, you're likely to respond in the same way or with the same amount of stress activation, even though today may not be as threatening as what the past situation was. So you can get stuck in these limited programming loops and it means that you inflexibly only choose one or two defensive strategies. Now you're not consciously choosing this, it's happening outside of conscious awareness in lower centres of the brain. But if that programming is hypersensitised from previous stresses, it's more likely to be the path we take in the future. And you could think of this as a little bit like a bank or a big hill. And if we get a lot of rain that comes, we'll get certain patterns or ways that the water will travel down that bank. And as we get more and more water, these grooves can deepen. So in the future, when it rains again, the water is likely to travel down these same grooves again. And so it is with our neuromatrix or the way that our neurons connect. So without learning another way to respond, it is likely to be the same pattern that we'll use in the future. And the good news is that we can unlearn old patterns and relearn new ways to respond. If we took a pinhead size speck of brain tissue and looked at it under an electron microscope, the research has revealed that there would be 350 million neural connections. Now, when it comes to connections that are possible, it's actually thought that between different nerve cells, there are more connections possible than there are positively charged particles in the universe. So there is extraordinary possibility for change and 
in this coding behind it that forms these connections between neurons, the things that we do when we face future stresses, we can change how they link and connect with each other. So your responses and behaviours are a result of this coding, as well as the sensations and emotions that you feel, and also the thoughts that you might experience under stress. Your unique neuromatrix and the ways that you may have learnt to respond under stress is not who you are. It's simply what was learnt from the people in your life, the environments you were in, and the experiences that you've had. What you experience today will actively influence these connections as they're always in a state of change. The potential that you have to reshape your brain and nervous system is unlimited and there really can be room for both past traumas as well as the present moment to be filled with new possibilities and a new story. You'll find attached worksheets that can really help you look at any limiting programming that may have formed from previous chronic and traumatic stress. You can look at whether you tend to move into hyperarousal or hypoarousal and the different sensations, thoughts and behaviours that arise with each of those. You'll also find attached questions that can help you get to know your own unique triggers so that you don't need to keep responding in the same ways to stresses.